Hey folks, this is Steve from String Buzz. Today we're going to tackle All My Lovin' by the Beatles. So if we want to properly geek out about uh, Beatles songs and everything, we have to geek out about the gear that they were using. So on this record and every record that they played, they were playing a set of Gibson J160E acoustic guitars, uh, just like this one. The thing that makes this guitar really unique is it's a laminate top, ladder braced acoustic guitar. Uh, with uh, electric P90 pickup installed and a volume and tone mounted on it. So it's not the ideal acoustic guitar, but it's really designed as an electric guitar that can be played acoustically. In the early years, the Beatles were using them more as an electric guitar. And as the records progressed, they were using more as an acoustic guitar. For example, Norwegian Wood, um, If I Fell, and there's a bunch of tracks where it was just all over the place. Sometimes they would even blend them. Um, and you can hear some of the bleed from the acoustic coming through the vocal microphones when they record it live, especially on the first few albums. So the thing that makes this guitar even more unique in the way that it sounds is that they, they have electric flat wound strings on them. And most of the Beatles guitars were strung with flat wounds, and it's a very unique sound, uh, that flat wound sound. But on an acoustic guitar, it's definitely very subdued sits in the mix very well so it might not be the ideal acoustic guitar on paper but certainly for the way the Beatles were using them um, they've, they worked around it and made it part of their sound so getting into John's guitar parts one thing to take note of anytime you're approaching a John guitar part especially rhythm parts is he was coming from a banjo player's perspective that's where he started out so he really knew how to utilize the top four strings and that's definitely the case in this song so if we take a look at the the voicings that he's using throughout this song um, we'll start with the first chord the f sharp minor it's a second position f sharp minor chord then second position b major chord all using the top four strings then he moves to an e major shape um, or e major chord using a d shape with the third in the bottom and then to a c sharp minor a major in the fifth position, which is coming off of this, down to an F sharp minor, to a D major, to a B seventh. So you notice that little chromatic line. That's just really good voice leading. Very James Bond theme. And we start the second part of the first verse. Starts the same as the first part. F sharp minor. sharp minor, A major, B major this time on the seventh uh, fret, and then down to an E major in the fourth position. So for the chorus, um, he's using the same sort of voicings, and this goes to C sharp minor, E augmented, and then E major. So they're using that technique, and this is all over a lot of their songs, like um, I mean mine and something where they sort of have a chromatic line that's just happening while the other voicings are saying the same. So again, that's C sharp minor, E augmented to E. Now for the uh, the guitar solo section, he goes to uh, similar voicings, just a different progression. So this time it's A major to E major. F sharp minor, B major, E major. And the only different uh, part now is right at the end, the last chorus, uh, the second part of the last chorus. He moves up to a C sharp minor on the ninth fret. And then he moves up to an E major on the 12th fret. Back to the C sharp minor then resolving it down to an E major. One of the coolest parts of this track is John's rhythm attack here. So he was even proud of this, as he mentioned in later interviews. Um, so what he's doing is a really loose right hand, fast uh, triplet kind of groove. And uh, it, there's no breaks in it except for at the choruses. So this is what it sounds like acoustically. And here 
here it is, electric. So one important thing about those voicings he's using is he doesn't have a lot of time to switch between chords. So that's one of the reasons why everything's so tight and quick. And it's a great, great use of uh, voice leading inside of those voicings. Now for the chorus, jo both John and George do the same rhythm, which is this upbeat um, that's accenting uh, around the singing. Okay, so moving on to the rhythm guitar part in the solo section. So instead of doing that fast triplet rhythm, John's actually just sort of holding it down with um, a more sparse groove. So like this. Moving on to George's guitar parts. So as I mentioned, John's playing up in the high register of the guitar. So George is really holding it down on the low end. So they're all pretty straightforward bar chords. One thing that George does make use of a lot is that C-shaped bar chord that he uses on the E. So pay attention to that and how he's moving. Moving into the guitar solo part. So this is just a great, great sort of uh, tribute to Chet Atkins, if you will. And all he's really doing is using hybrid picking and just accenting chord tones. So he starts with this uh, little rockabilly Chet Atkins bass line thing. Then, from that point on, he's just using a hybrid picking, which is his pick and middle finger together to pick the third and first strings, and then the fourth and second strings. So, the first part of that is an A chord. Next part is now this one is coming off of this A shape, and this one's coming off of this B shape, and then this coming right back from that A again. So again, what we have so far is now we move to the E shape. up to an E shape up here, this dominant B7 shape or diminished shape, back to the E shape, and then we go to an F sharp minor, F sharp minor in ninth position, down to an E, with this little rockabilly. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed the video. There is a link in the description for uh, the handwritten tab and chord charts for this. And also, if you dig this, please hit the subscribe and the like button, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.